there are all these book bans now throughout this country. I mean, I'm, I'm afraid that Mad Honey is going to be banned in the South and in I'm other places. I'm confident that it will be. <laughs> well. For now, Mad Honey is still on the shelves and on the New York Times bestsellers list, debuting at number three, to be precise. It's the work of two highly acclaimed, highly prolific authors, a coming-of-age story that dives into some of today's most divisive topics. Years ago, Olivia McAfee escaped an abusive marriage, taking her son Asher and starting over. And now she's a beekeeper, Asher's 18, he is head over heels for the new girl in town whose name is Lily. And then one day Olivia gets a phone call, Lily is dead and Asher is being questioned by the police. To me, this, this is really a book about whether the past ever stays in the past about gender and identity and the nuances of how we become who we're supposed to be. Right, and what do we owe the people that we love about telling them about who we have been? I can tell you as a transgender woman, I am haunted by that question mm. sometimes because when I meet someone new, do I need to reveal mm -hmm. my past to them? Is that who I am now? But what makes you so convinced that the book might get banned? Well, let me speak as someone who's got five current bans on a, a book of mine Oh, you right win. Now. I've only got one. Yeah. Um, I'm banned all <laughs> the time. And uh, I'm banned for a book that I sometimes don't even understand why it, it, it's being banned. The book in question, Picot's 2007 novel about the aftermath of a school shooting committed by a bullied teen. 19 minutes right now, last tally, um, was being banned in five different school districts in five different states. Um, including one, this is my favorite, including Connecticut, which had at one point when the book came out, made it curriculum for their schools and created an anti-bullying curriculum for teachers to use with it. And now it's banned. Yeah. And so that kind of tells you what the arc of the world has done over the past 10 years or so since it came out. Books are being banned today, not because they're, they're bad books, but because they're dangerous books, because they do inspire thought and conversation and empathy. And for a lot of people, that's terrifying because it tears down the walls of your echo chamber. Meanwhile, we're here at the New York Hilton Midtown. The roof is home to six urban beehives, 450,000 buzzing guests and their queens. A nod to the main character, Olivia's beekeeping, something Jody says she spent months researching, even becoming an apprentice beekeeper. For me, it was about the idea that there was this matriarchy in a bee world. I love that. And I wanted to use that metaphorically in our story. Jenny, this book in many ways is literally your dream. This my Come dream. True. <laughs> so I, I literally had a dream, May 2017. And the dream was I was co-authoring a book with Jody Pico. And the first thing I did is I just tweeted that out. And Jody happened to be online at that moment and sent me a DM like seconds later that said, what What's was it this? about? She told me that it was kind of a plot about a, a mother and um, a son who was in love with a girl who gets killed. And I was like, let's do it. Let's write it. At the end of that conversation, I said to Jody, gee, tomorrow I hope I dream that I'm co-authoring a book with Stephen King. And I said, don't we all? Don't we all. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. But the dream project came with challenges along the way. Tell us a little bit about your process. I mean, this can't be easy to co-author a book. All right, so it's just, it literally is a book that began as a dream. And then we had to do the work. Mm -hmm. And the first thing we had to do was figure out what the plot was going to be. And for me, that was really hard because I usually, you know, I kind of fly by the seat of my pants. I let the story reveal itself to me as I'm, as I'm telling it. Well, you can't do that if it's a murder story. You can't get to the last chapter and say, like, well, I don't know who did it. <laughs> how would I know? Also, so, that is not how I work no, at all, ever. No. <laughs> so you're more I'm of a... I'm a plotter. She's a pantser. Those, those are the two... Throughout the novel, the authors explore gender identity issues through the lens of a trans character. For some of your readers, this may be the first time they're encountering a trans character with mm -hmm. such depth. Did you feel a certain amount of responsibility or pressure? Well, I always feel that pressure. I mean, as a transgender person, as a very public person, sometimes I feel like I have to be the Jackie Robinson of the transgender movement, that I always have to be, you know, perfect. And I, I can't be perfect. I can tell a pretty good story on a good day, though. And by the time yeah. you find out that mm -hmm. there is a trans character in this mm -hmm. book, you have already fallen in love with them. And that's the point. The point is to make you question your assumptions. Because even if you know there's a trans character in this book, 
you're probably not going to know which one it is right off the bat. This country is in the middle of a storm around transgender identity. And what we're forgetting is that these are, we are real people mm -hmm. who live complex lives, that we're vulnerable mm -hmm. and that, that we are real. While trans rights are a continuing political flashpoint, Jody and Jenny hope this novel will help open hearts and minds. This is a book that if the people who are allied against us right now were to read, maybe their hearts would open a little bit. And I, I don't know that a book can change the world, but I certainly hope it can change one or two hearts. You said you don't want people to take something away from the novel. Yeah. You want people to, to give. give. I want them to give a thought. I want them to give a chance. I want them to give a damn. I think people make a lot of judgments about those folks they don't know very well. It's not about trans issue. It's, it's about people. It's about people like you and me. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.